for eternity on the foundation of Christ. Well, when I think of that question, I think straight away of Jesus, um, because he was led by the Spirit, he was filled with the Spirit. I would say that a Spirit-filled life is, is one that's modelled on Jesus and produces the fruits that Jesus had, so love and joy and peace and all those fruits that we as Christians want to be producing. A life that is responsive to... Um, Things that are going on all around you and you get a tip off, um, a God prod um, or, you, or you can just see God's fingerprints on things and you start to link those things up and um, for me it's usually a combination of all of those things and I start getting the feeling that um, God is trying to draw my attention to something. I think uh, a life led by the Spirit is a life that um, isn't rushed and isn't frantic. Um, a life that resists reacting to all and everything and takes time to either listen or to think more deeply about what's happening, what's behind what's happening. I'm thinking back to when I first uh, left school and wanted to know what to do as, as a, a career. Um, I'd always wanted to be a hairdresser and I went with my mum to... Um, a salon in Bristol and uh, had an interview was accepted to start and as I walked through the uh, salon and saw these ladies under hair dryers and being uh, beautified and that the, the voice in my head or perhaps in my heart said do you want to spend your life making people beautiful or would you rather spend your life bringing healing and that's just was a, um, a nudge from the Holy Spirit, I believe, which enabled me to think about nursing, and that was where my career led me. I can remember the first time it happened, um, and that, that stays with me. I'd been uh, talking to a lady at the school gate, and she was Dutch, and I was quite interested in her. I felt drawn to her, and um, she'd shared a few things. I knew that she was quite lonely. Her husband was an academic and hadn't long been in the country. Um, but I was looking for a way to maybe have more of a conversation with her and perhaps invite her around. And uh, on this particular day, I'd been praying for her. And as I was walking on the street, I just felt um, God say, um, um, she's in the garden. She's in her garden. And I knew that she had this front garden in her house. So instead of walking where I was walking, I walked around the other way. And she was in her garden and that led to a conversation and she invited me in for a cup of tea and, and we had a bit of a friendship. It wasn't for long because her husband was moving on again but that was the first time. Thinking about this question an incident comes to me from maybe a couple three weeks ago of just um, encountering somebody on the road on my way home from the church to my house and uh, he was obviously not well this gentleman with a walking stick and I just felt it was the right thing to do to talk with him. So we had a conversation and I, he started to tell me about his uh, ailments and I sympathised and um, that was all it was at the time. And yet um, Friday I went to a hospice to uh, see someone uh, connected with the church and he was in a double room and the other person in the room was this gentleman who I thought, I recognise you. And that was the man I'd spoken to, and he remembered and appreciated it, and we had a, a deeper conversation um, on that occasion. So I feel that God gave me the inspiration and the courage to talk to him in the first place, and that made it easier to be more uh, available the second time. Quite often, it's nothing um, miraculous. It's I'll be at church and I'll just look at somebody's face and I'll think, they're not quite right, I need to talk to them, or maybe they need a visit, um, or you just get a hunch that there's a phone call to make. Um, so it's those kind of things. It can be quite simple, um, but can stretch right through to a very specific word of knowledge, perhaps. Uh, pray every day. Um, assume that God is active in the, the present. 
day and for me that always has to start in the morning with uh, prayer, uh, Bible study, personal worship. Um, that might look different for other people but for me it has to be in the morning. Uh, that sets my day right. Um, make sure that Jesus is at the centre of everything I do. I suppose I want to quote Brother Lawrence when he says practice the presence of Jesus um, and that's what I've tried to do and I think that's a great help in the mundane things of life just knowing that Jesus is um, with us, within us, um, taking part in all the things that we're doing through our lives and being able to communicate with him, talking to him about it or asking his advice, talking to him about the, the problems that we have. Being open and aware and appreciative of nature is a big part, certainly for me, because um, the spirit was brooding over the chaos and created the world at, at God's command. And uh, he was there at the creation of Jesus in, within Mary. And for me, I think if we can just sort of be open to the way God creates and renews and grows things around us, the images are there to inspire us to believe that that's what he's doing within us, especially at times when we don't feel it. I keep a journal when something, a revelation through the spirit, I suddenly get a thought, I'll make sure that I write that down at the end of the day or something and then sometimes you can jigsaw things together and you realise that there's a bit of a theme running. And then putting yourself in that place when you can receive, so that's about meeting with other Christians um, in order that you can be fed and, and to go out and serve.